this is a family photo. This is from Beirut. Let's kind of soak this in. This is near the hotel and just watch the body language because we've been waiting to see what is going on here. The French president tapping his one-time BFF, the president of the United States, right there as they get together. So they had a surprise lunch yesterday. We're not sure exactly what was discussed, but we do know that there was a surprise visit that took place today from the Iranian foreign minister. It was a very brief visit. He sat down with the French president for, I would say, about less than two hours and just moments ago flew out of here. So we've been waiting for this event, and it is quite delayed. It was supposed to have started about an hour ago. It is a traditional class picture there of the G7 leaders as well as some other countries, mainly African countries that have been invited there. Um, not sure what we can read of the body language between President Trump and Emmanuel Macron so far, but it didn't seem as if it had been as warm, at least, a greeting as we've seen yesterday. So far, as you can tell, they haven't necessarily chatted with each other during this particular class photo. But once again, this is all we can do is just kind of read the tea leaves and try to figure out if there's been some sort of rift that has taken place between these powerful men and women. It is quite an interesting scene there watching all of them. Um, the Canadian president, our prime minister right now, Justin Trudeau, uh, the, he hosted the event last year, which was an unmitigated disaster. President Trump left that G7 summit very early on and then um, did not sign an uh, agreement between all of the parties. Now, this particular instant incident here, we have, uh, they decided not to do a communique, which it had been traditional for so many G7 summits in previous years. As we continue to watch these pictures, live pictures from the south of France, and you see Brigitte Macron between uh, President Trump and Emmanuel Macron, uh, do you want to bring in Jonathan Allen, who's watching all of this? Jonathan, we, you heard the news, a surprise visit by the Iranian um, foreign minister, and now we're seeing the body language here. What do you make of all that's happening there at the G7? Well, I mean, number one, it didn't seem like any of the other leaders really wanted to speak to President Trump. Uh, a lot of physical distance between them, uh, other leaders speaking with each other. Um, you know, you don't usually see that. President Trump, uh, you know, reached his cheek out there for uh, Brigitte Macron to kiss. Um, it looked very uncomfortable for a moment. Uh, it seemed to be pleading with her to, to show some affection. She did that. Um, but a uh, very uncomfortable look among those world leaders. I think with the Iranian uh, official coming in there, uh, it's a reminder that at this point that Iran, uh, which has been isolated from the rest of the uh, the rest of the world for so long, um, that Iran is uh, somehow welcomed uh, by this group of leaders, or at least by the French president, to be in this place at a time when the United States has been pushing away um, from the rest of the world leaders. And so, even though Iran not really an official part of this process. Uh, the uh, Iran nuclear deal having fallen apart, the tension between the United States and the Iran, and Iran growing, uh, you've got the rest of the Western world perhaps a little bit more open to the idea that it can make a deal with Iran than open to the idea that it can make deals with the United States. Uh, it's really a stunning turnaround in just a few years. Yeah, it is. And as we look at these pictures, you get, do get a sense, um, but whatever they're talking about at this point, that they're trying to make an effort, at least for the cameras, um, to be communicating with each other and to be on fairly good terms right now. Um, you see the president uh, speaking with Emmanuel Macron over the last minute or so. Uh, they're joined by their wives. Um, Jonathan, do you think there's any chance at all that the U.S. delegation did not know that this top Iranian diplomat would be there? It sounded uh, from the reaction like this was a surprise to the United States that they were not expecting, uh, expecting this visit at all. Yeah, and as they walk away right now, they're heading towards the Hotel de, de Palais, which is a, a very historic five-star Beautiful hotel right there on the banks of the Atlantic Ocean, right next to the the light tower, as you can see right there. And they are planning to have an extended dinner. 
and continue their meetings right there. Um, we don't expect to hear from the president anytime soon. I do want to bring in right now our team that's been following all of this. Our NBC's Hallie Jackson is joining us from the nearby city of San Juan de Lu. Um, I also want to bring in uh, Ambassador Christopher Hill, who's been watching all of this, MSNBC diplomacy expert and former ambassador to Iraq. Uh, he's currently a professor at the University of Denver, and Niall Stanage, the White House columnist for The Hill. And just a reminder, as we look at those pictures, we don't have control over the live images there, and it does appear as if the pool cameras have gone away, at least for now. Hallie, um, you saw the, the the family photo play out right there. We've been waiting for it for quite some mm -hmm. time, and we had the surprise visit earlier today. What's your take? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to look at the day as a whole, Candice, I mean, listen, we, we traditionally see these class photos at the end of summits like this or during, at some point, these kinds of summits. And I think that that is what you expected to see. Uh, notable to me that the French President Emmanuel Macron and President Trump had what looked to be a somewhat serious conversation there for a second, gestured over, came back, brought somebody on stage, the two of them among the last to leave the stage. President Trump knows the optics of these types of events and knows that the cameras are on him, very closely monitoring who he's speaking to, when he's speaking speaking to them. Uh, and I do think it's notable that it was French President Macron as we take a look now. And I'm not sure if this is live or not of President Trump and the First Lady walking in. I think this is just within a couple of moments ago mm. as the two get ready for the dinner here. Uh, and you can see that video on a loop just north of where we are in Biarritz. So uh, the president interacting there with Emmanuel Macron is, is interesting because remember it was Macron who invited the foreign minister, the French government who invited the Iranian foreign minister to not the G7, but to G7 adjacent, you could say, to have that conversation, as uh, Macron really wants to show that he is able to make progress here, that he's working to make progress on an issue that he's been working on, trying to ratchet down tensions in the Middle East with Iran. Now, that is not, based on our reporting, sitting well uh, with some of the president's advisors who are concerned about the fact that there was not more advance notice given to them by, uh, by Macron of this visit. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. Again, Zarif is gone. This was quick. And he never actually came to the G7 site itself, as we take another look here at that class picture that happened mm -hmm. just in the last couple of moments. You can see Prime Minister of Japan Shinzo Abe and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau as well. So uh, the president is now sort of